Hello, good morning. We're here at ND Graphics in Toronto today and we're going to be wrapping a Mazda for Sue Tucker. Um, a lot of people think that wrapping cars is just strictly printing on digital media, laminating and installing a vehicle wrap. There's actually a lot more possibilities than that. 3M and some other companies have wrap films that are out of the box ready to go with a lot of different colors and a lot of different uh, sizes as well as textures that you can choose from. Today we're going to be working with not only a matte color but also a gloss color and we will be working with a few other tools as well as knife with knifeless technology and using a lot of promoters like primer 94 and also tape sealer when we're finished. Um, I'm just going to quickly review sort of the starting procedures cleaning as well as application. We would obviously ask this customer to bring the car washed soap and water no lanolins no waxes or any kind of additives like that just plain soap and water. We're then going to follow this up with an isopropyl wipe, which is a very mild solvent. We use 99%. That way we can make sure it evaporates very quickly and we wipe up any residue very, very fast. I'm going to always start from low and work high, okay, mainly because of our rainward overlaps. If we ever do have an overlap, we want them to be facing rainward. That way there's no exposed edges that we catch water or any type of debris. I'm going to start uh, this vehicle wrap and hopefully by the end of this tape, you're going to see it completely done. Right. Whenever I'm working on a double compound, which is what a hood is, um, double compound means that it moves in two different directions, almost like the top of a helmet. Okay, it's double compound. Whenever we're working on something like that, we never work from one side to the other or from the top to the bottom. Because what we're doing there is we're transferring all the energy of that double compound from one edge having zero tension and putting all that energy 100% to the other edge. That's going to be failure. Same if I start on the one side. I move from zero tension all the way to 100% tension. So what I'm going to do with all double compounds is I'm going to start in the center and I'm going to break it up into four equal sections. And I'm always going to work away from the middle that way, the tension or that energy of the double compound is split equally. I've primed all the edges with Primer 94. I've let dry for about five minutes. The nice thing about this 1080 film is that it has both components to the adhesive. It's got control tack and it also has comply feature. And you notice that the, co the control tack feature allows me to float it there, tack it, remove the rest of the liner, and it's not sticking for me right away. And the reason for that is because it's, it's got microscopic glass posts that are built into the adhesive trademarked control tack, and those allow me an air barrier, able to slide around, not making full contact with the substrate yet, until I put pressure. And that's why they're called pressure activated adhesives. They do not stick until I activate it with pressure of my squeegee, pushing those posts into the adhesive and creating contact or bond. You notice here while I'm working, I'm working on the hood here and when I've finished C cutting or smiling from the center out and working those sections equally, I'm starting to get into a bit of an issue here. And a lot of installers want to naturally work into a corner. What you have to realize now is that this is a problem area, okay? You don't want to gather film to that problem area. So what you're going to do is you're going to stop your squeegee stroke from working this way, and you're going to start to work away from a problem. What that does is that starts to open up the corner here and allows for less excess of film to be gathering. So far on this hood, I haven't even used the heat gun yet. It's just working the techniques of C-cutting, or what we call smiling, and working away from problems. So when I do bring my heat gun out, it's going to be very little heat used. So you notice now, because I've worked away, I have a lot less film here to deal with. So as I add heat to this 1080 film, I'm not adding heat to pull or to add memory. I'm adding the heat to take memory away from the film, to just warm it up and to just relax it. 
And again, it's just technique, just pulling away, running away from a problem. And you notice this just lays down for me. Very little heat, very little pull, very little memory. And because of that, very little warranty, if any, because there's no memory in the film for the sun to pull that back. We always kind of run heat over it, making sure that any air that may be still trapped under there will show itself and we can squeegee it down. As well, this laminate's self-healing. So any minor scratches or little uh, particles of dust that we may have smeared around are gonna lay down flat and go away. So what I've done here is I've actually taken the measurements off the other side. I'm using the new knifeless, knifeless tech systems tape here. That way I don't have to actually put my knife to the paint when I'm cutting this custom shape on the side of the car. What I really like about this tape is that you apply it first of all, put the film over top of it, and then you pull this Kevlar line from underneath. I'm gonna create this really nice shape down the side of the car. Uh, simply by overlapping the two colors, cutting through the center, weeding away the excess, and then saw cutting my butt seam nice and tight together. How I know that I've matched both sides uh, to be equal, I've taken measurements off the other side in a couple of key points here. And then I've run my knife lesson sequence to ensure that both my sides are going to be exactly the same. The film that I'm using today is actually installed at room temperature. Um, a lot of people think the hotter the day, the better the install is. And I'll be honest with you, that is the exact opposite. Most of these films have a couple of features in their adhesive, one being control tack, one being comply. Both those features are built into an adhesive. So on hot days, when uh, the temperatures start to rise, especially on the substrate as well as the film, you start to lose all those components of the adhesive. The adhesive starts to flow. And actually 3M calls adhesive slow moving liquids because they do flow over time and level out. And because of that, they need to be anywhere between 10 and 32 degrees. That's their optimal working temperature. So if we start working outside on a hot summer day, the sun's beating down on the substrate or on the car, um, you're going to be really struggling with those features. You're not going to have those nice components to the adhesive that allow you to float it there with the control tack, create your air barrier, or when you're squeegeeing the comply, which allows you to get the air out. And a lot of people talk about channel, uh, channel collapse, and most of that sometimes can be, can be blamed on the weather. Either it's too hot of a substrate and it starts to collapse those channels in the adhesive, or it's too cold and you're still leaving air in there. So really try to get a vehicle wrap inside, nice room temperature, it's what we call acclimating. We want to bring it either up to temperature or cool it down to temperature, either or. These adhesives work much better. They perform the way they're manufactured to perform if they're in those temperature ranges. The Knifeless Tech Systems is a really good product and a lot of the top preferred installers in Canada do use this product. Um, myself and my, th my three brothers, uh, we use this product pretty well daily. Um, you see the kind of design that we're doing here or if you're cutting a double hood stripe on a, on a Mustang or you're doing some custom, 
custom stripe package or a custom design for a customer to follow hood lines and down certain angles of cars. That, that material, that knifeless tech systems works really well in there. We really enjoy working with that. Now, as far as cutting our seams, um, we're very experienced. We've been doing this over 25 years and as 12 years as trainers with 3M. And I will tell you, even experienced guys like myself and my brothers and other preferred across Canada, we still really do enjoy using the, the uh, knifeless tech systems. Works very well with all films. Um, I think we stacked 14 layers of black carbon fiber 1080 before that line broke. So it's very durable. You don't have to worry about it cutting through one or two layers. It cuts very precise. As long as you push out that air gap, get it nice and tight before you pull it, there won't be any wandering at all if you do that. A lot of people ask us what temperature do you wrap cars with? Um, I'll be honest with you, I'm not really a temperature guy. It's more look and feel of, of, of film. Um, when we are working with different films, obviously different thicknesses need less heat. So the, the thinner, less heat, the thicker, a little bit more heat. So it's not so much, you know, just staring at a temperature gauge on a gun and saying, oh, we're running at, you know, 850. It's mainly watching the film, watching it react. And when we see it flatten out, or when we see it to, to all the memory come out of it, it'll sort of, or sort of flatten. That's when we know it's ready to be applied. Torches are also uh, acceptable. Uh, a lot of people talk about torches. I'll be honest with you though, torches are very dangerous, meaning that it's the user that's holding the torch. A lot of people think, oh, I'll just bring a torch out and you know hit the heat. But that is such a high temperature that you have very quick um, reaction times. That will absolutely burn or char laminate very quickly. So we always joke, it's not the torch, it's the actual user that's the problem. Uh, be very cautious when you are pulling out a torch in any private um, functions or if you're in banks or, or any uh, unionized places uh, such as 3M. Uh, they won't really allow us to use torches. That's an open flame, uh, very dangerous, and we have to have what we call a fire watch, uh, proper propane tickets and things like that. So to eliminate that, we really do train a lot of young installers to, to use heat guns. You know, we can get around a lot of those bylaws simply by, by using a, a properly, proper heat gun. Because remember guys, with these new adhesives, we don't need to heat anymore to stretch. We're using heat to relax, and that's really what we want. We want relaxed film. Um, that has very little memory in it, so that so that the, the sun cannot pull that memory back and cause failure. And that's the leading cause of actual uh, failure, is the sun. If you think about it, it's a very, very large heat source. And that sun will draw back any memory instantly. Within a day, or even a few hours, that will start to pull back all memory that you've left in that film. So, use a very, uh, a very good heat gun use it to relax, to warm, watch the film sort of lay down before you apply it. And you'll start realizing you don't have as many warranty claims afterwards. Hopefully you're not having any. So a lot of people ask me what I have on the edge of my squeegee. I've actually got two of them here. Um, it's really, squeegees are a real installer preference. A lot of installers like different things. Uh, my one brother loves to use uh, velvet or satin on his edge. Uh, my other brother likes felt. I prefer to use uh, the soft side to hook and loop or a soft side to Velcro. Um, I've also got one that does have a very fuzzy felt on it uh, just in case of, of uh, uh, films that scratch very easily. I notice a lot of installers like to use that wet edge, which I think is a great squeegee as well. Um, but it is a, an installer preference, it really is. As long as you have a, a protected edge on a, on a squeegee, that's the main concern. Also knives, a lot of people ask what knife do you use? I used to use a Richards or an Olfa stainless. I really like that knife, but I found that 
I had to push a little bit more with that because it's a lighter knife. And so we've switched over to the Ulfa XA1. Uh, it's still a very good knife, but the weight of this is a little bit heavier, just slightly, and it allows us not to actually push. We just score lightly. The weight of that knife does all the scoring for us, and we never really have the tendency to cut paint. Um, again, though, it's an installer preference. Some installers like to use certain knives. The only thing I warn against is any big box cutting knives or carpet knives and things like that, guys. I mean, men and women across Canada know what I'm talking about when I say that, you know, we're not cutting core plaster Sintra here. We are literally cutting two thousandths of an inch thick PVC vinyl. Um, you do not need a heavy, heavy knife to do that. If you have young installers in your shops, I really recommend that you practice on props. Uh, the easiest way to, to get good with your knife or good with even with your squeegee is time with it. And the more you're doing it on props, the better you're going to become, not on customers' vehicles. You're going to gain the confidence that you need as well as the skills that you need so that when you do go out to a job site or you're going out to see one of your best customers and you're cutting on their car, you have the proper knife weight. You're just lightly scoring. Very embarrassing when someone calls you three years later and says, by the way, you've cut up my car. What are you gonna do about it? Nobody wants that phone call. Thank God we never have had that. I've outlined all these edges in Primer 94 as well. All seams along gaskets, wheel wells, handles here when I do them separately will be all done with primer. Mirrors will be done with primer. What primer is, is an adhesive promoter. It's not an adhesive uh, activator. A lot of people think it is, it's not. It's really just a promote adhesion. So think of it like a paint job. You know, automotive paints stick better to primer than they do metal. And it's the same with this, the, the Primer 94, the adhesives love it and it, they stick much stronger than they would to just a traditional uh, a paint on a vehicle. Very lightly, I'm just touching the score. Let the adhesive hold together and then it should release. Kind of a little uh, rapper's trick here. We always seem to leave the uh, driver's door handle to last. Sort of a psychological thing. You know, it gives you three of them to work on first to, to get perfect. Um, and then hopefully your driver's one goes down flawless. And that's the one that the driver sees every single day. Um, you'd be surprised how many people tell me that they don't even look at the passenger side of a wrap. I mean, they know it's there, but how many times you really get in and out or actually go over there and take a close look at it. So it's nice to be able to practice once or twice on the other side before you come to the driver's side. And then, you know, we get this one absolutely perfect. We kind of have a system on how to do it. Handles are always finicky, that's for sure. A lot of people take handles out, and I do take handles out as well when it's a personalization wrap, uh, meaning they're doing a full color change. Handles will be taken out. In this instance, this is just what we consider a vehicle wrap. Um, so 
you know, we can do a lot, but we're not going to spend uh, the, the labor involved to pull out all the handles and take care of all those kind of things. Sometimes it's wise to hire in people that do that type of thing every day to help you out. I work with a gentleman that actually does high-end interiors. Uh, he does an upholsterer and I will bring him in just to pretty well dismantle a car for me. Um, that way I can assure that I'm not breaking any clips. He's got all the proper tools. Um, he knows how to put everything back in after. And that way I can just worry about putting on the film. And that's really what we do best. I'm not the greatest at taking off door pads and, and uh, electronics and things like that inside these cars. Because I will tell you, there's some really crazy things that you're going to find inside some of these door pads. Uh, there's heated this and heated that and there's electronic this and electronic that and speakers and audio and there's you name it airbags and all kinds of things that can really really mess you up Whenever we're working on a mirror, we have to keep in mind that this is also a double compound. And a lot of failures happen on mirrors because the installer starts up really high, works all the energy once again to the bottom. The zero tension, 100% tension. It's gonna cause failure on the lower edge. Same if they start over here. If they start on the wide side, work their way over to the peak, they're gonna have no tension here, but they're gonna have 100% tension of that double compound all to one side. They're gonna cause failure over here. So whenever we touch tackle a mirror, what we like to do is just start in the middle. Some installers like to pre-stretch, you know, it's totally your, uh, your choice. I personally just like to work things as I see them. So what I'm gonna do now is gonna work four equal sections. I'm gonna break up the energy of that mirror into four quarters. Once again, we're not using the heat to just pull, we're using it to relax and then I'm just gonna place it on the mirror. So I'm starting always from center, I'm working one way, I'm relaxing, I'm always from center, working other quarter, once again, I'm not pulling very hard. I'm just giving it the amount of pressure that I need. And 1080 films can be pulled up to 130% of themselves, uh, just like 180. So you can add a little bit of tug, but you don't want to overstretch them where that memory is going to come back to haunt you afterwards with the sun. So I'm just working it very gently into the primer. And I did forget to mention that we would always, first of all, treat this, all the edges of this mirror with primer 94 which is the 3M adhesive promoter. Just relax it and tuck it down to the primer. There is no stretching, there is no pulling, there is no adding of memory. Relax. Always away from center. Always away, center away, center away, center away. And then I'll finish up my final corner here. Splitting the tension equally one way and then the other way to spread that corner out. Now I can finish this off. A lot of installers have a tendency to work into a corner 
or they work into a problem. They actually have to change that habit. Whenever you're working a problem area or a corner, you have to learn to spread that corner and work away from it. And in doing so, they're gonna pull the tension away from that instead of pinching it. They're gonna open that up and that allows me now to just finish this off. That easy, okay, I'm not going into it. I'm away from it, then I finish. Same here now, I'm gonna do the corner first. I'm gonna kinda of open it up, not pulling, just relaxing, okay? I'm gonna open this corner up, I'm gonna work 50 one way, and then I'm gonna work 50 the other way. I'm gonna nicely spread that, that corner or problem area out. Now all that's left now is just to trim up, re-squeegee, 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 and then let sit for 12 hours overnight to allow those acrylic adhesives to really bond fully to that substrate. Make sure you take your time in trimming. You've worked really hard to get that mirror down and the last thing you need to do is to make a wrong cut and have to redo the whole mirror again. Some installers do like to pop these caps off the mirrors. Um, that's their preference. A lot of them like to wrap around the other sides. Um, I don't really like to take much off, especially on vehicle wrapping. Like I said, personalization wrapping, color changes, those types of things where customers are paying $5,000, $6,000 to get things done. I absolutely would have all these things apart. But for normal vehicle wrapping, um, you know, doing the best we can, as tight as we can, and as clean as we can, and supporting everything to primer is extremely important. And don't forget everybody, you have to re-squeegee all edges. They're the most vulnerable. Edges are very vulnerable, you know? Things don't fail here, they fail along here. So make sure they've got full contact and they're squeegeed in very solidly into the primer. And there we have a finished mirror. Customer will be very happy, hopefully.